What's going on guys? Just want to let you guys know before we get into the video that just like when me and Jesse did our spoiler cast for Star Wars Last Jedi, there's going to be uh, no background footage in this video, it's just going to be the thumbnail. So feel free to tab out, walk around, and enjoy the video. Just want to let you guys know before we get into it. Thank you guys in advance for watching, and let's just get right into it. What's going on guys? My name is Jack. Welcome back to a very special end of the year edition of the Lion's Den. And today, joining me, once again, Jesse Tiv. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing, brother? Dude, I am doing fantastic. Enjoying the new year, ready to move forward. And with the new year, I thought it'd be great to sit down and talk about the games that I enjoyed playing most in 2017. And just to clarify things right out the gate, this is not like best games that came out in 2017. This is not like a top 10 list of any kind. I didn't really play that many new games in 2017, but I want to talk about the games that kept my attention the most during this year that I kept on playing and kept on wanting to play and kind of approach it a little bit differently than a lot of other people were doing. So without any further ado, me and Jesse are just going to list off our games and then we're just going to talk about them in no real particular order. Jesse, hit us with your list, bro. Alright, well let me first say that I game every day, multiple hours a day. Same. And this year was actually a kind of a rough year for gaming for me personally. I didn't have like a go-to game like I had in previous years. So this list is kind of all over the place, but let me hit you with it. It's going to be Titanfall 2, League of Legends, Tom Clancy's Division 1.8 that just came out, Roblox, which I just found this year, Phantom Forces in particular, and um, Dirty Bomb. And all Destiny right. 2. Also, yep. forgot Destiny 2. <laughs> Can't forget Destiny 2. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of in the same position, especially I've, I've found that as I've gotten more into gaming over over the years, gotten like better hardware and just more games in general, that I'm not just sitting down and playing one game. Like, three years ago, all I was playing was Counter-Strike, 100%. Every day, day in, day out, boom, that was it. And now, you know, I find myself playing a lot. So just like Jesse's list, my list is a little bit of a hodgepodge of everything. And my favorite games this year were, in no particular order, uh, Counter-Strike, a game called Dead Cells, Dirty Bomb, Paladins, Team Fortress 2, The Division, and Destiny 2 as well. And I guess since we accidentally forgot it, why don't we start with the game that kind of came out the latest of these two alongside The Division. We're going to talk about Destiny 2 as one of our favorite games. And obviously, there's a quite a lot of uh, controversial opinions about Destiny 2 and where it's going right now. But I still think having Destiny on PC, which is my preferred platform, just makes it fun to play. We've ne we haven't had that before, and I just enjoy being able to play in this in this sandbox on PC, and it keeps my attention really well. Yeah, I agree 100. percent I'm also playing Destiny 2 on PC. I also have it on PlayStation, but since PC release, I've not gone back to PlayStation. For me personally, I, I love Destiny. I'm a big fan of the franchise. Sunk many many hours into Destiny One. And was happy to be um, on board for Destiny 2. Right now, I have shelved the game for me personally just until some new content comes out, just because the PvP is not in a great spot for me personally. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for to come back to the game. But I still consider it one of my favorite games this year just because I was more than happy to play through the campaign, experiment with new guns, and have a new Destiny. Yeah, and I think that's kind of that's the overall feeling that I have with the two. Obviously, I'm still playing the game right now, and I enjoy playing it to some extent. I have problems with it like everyone does, but I just like, I like the feel of Destiny as a game on PC. I think it's really smooth, it controls well, and when you do well in Crucible, even though it's not the balance that I particularly like, it just feels good to me, so I keep playing. And I think, like a couple of games on this list going into 2018 this is one that i'm going to watch closely and definitely play a lot and if it gets to a good spot which i think it will it will be a contender for the best game of 2018 i really do think so yeah i agree 100 percent. i have shelved the game right now i am not playing but i can guarantee you when we do this list 2018 i will have destiny 2 on my list because i have a lot of faith in bungie and with a whole year for them to release a couple of dlcs i'm sure it's going to be great yeah, I think uh, moving on then, because it's also like the last game we started playing for this year, me and Jesse both recently got into Tom Clancy's The Division with this new big expansion they just released, and I have to admit, 
From knowing what I did know about the launch of The Division, I was not sure what to expect, but the game's state right now has been incredibly enjoyable. It's super smooth, the combat flows really well, I find the universe very interesting, and grinding through the story to get to the new PvP stuff was a really good time. I didn't expect it to be, but 20 hours in, I was I was very engaged, and it was definitely uh, this is the division is like my surprise game on this list because I didn't think I would enjoy it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I played uh, the division on, at launch on PlayStation. Right now, we're playing it on PC. Um, yeah, I heard about 1.8, and I saw that they were bringing in a legitimate PvP mode that has no NPCs and nothing else called skirmish. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot. I asked Jack if he wanted to get in on with me, so I started another um, character on PC. And little did I realize that you had to grind all the way up to level 30 to play PvP. And this shows you how good the game is right now, that we were willing to grind all the way through, just only to play, we only wanted to play Skirmish. We were willing to grind all the way through the campaign and then realize we didn't have that good enough gear and go into the Dark Zone and have some fun in the Dark Zone and play around in PvP and all that stuff. So to put that much uh, amount of hours into the game just to get to PvP, Let's you know that we really had a good time playing it. And plus, it's not like it's one of these AAA games that's just dead. Uh, this this update has kind of revived it. There's you know it's getting up into like the twenty thousands of like concurrent player counts on Steam, and yeah, and on console it, that, that number is bigger. And yeah, and it plays well enough that I was able to sit through twenty plus hours of campaign. And I don't yeah. normally sit through campaigns. I have a big <laughs> problem with starting story games and not finishing them. But yeah. me and Jess hit the grind like nobody's yeah. business. Like, we bought this game after Christmas and already <laughs> finished it before making this video. So that gives you an idea of how hard we grinded on this. And it yeah. was genuinely fun. It was difficult. And I thought the story was interesting. We're going to do, like, a, a bigger video on The Division because it deserves it. Like, a full review. Yeah. But yeah. as a last kind of, like, sprinkle on top for what has been, you know, an interesting year in gaming, getting back into The Division was really surprising for me just how good it was. Yeah, not to mention that this expansion, not only it being a very big expansion, it was also a free expansion. So that's always a, a great thing to see. Yeah. So that's The Division. I highly recommend you check it out. I believe it's still $20 on Steam right now. And if hell of a you, grab for 20 bucks. Hell of a grab. There's a lot of content. It, a minimum 20 hours of straight campaign without doing any of the si um, some of the side missions. Yeah, so there's a, a lot the to, there, yeah. there's a lot to enjoy there. Yeah, so kind of we'll moving on. Like uh, definitely my mainstay. It's unquestionably one of my favorite games ever made. I obviously played a good bit of Counter-Strike this year. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. There's there's not a whole lot to say here. This game has so much polish. It is the absolute antithesis of what a competitive shooter should be. There, there will not be a game that can you know take Counter-Strike off its pedestal, in my opinion, for what it offers as a competitive 5v5 game. It's honestly perfect. Yeah, it's the best competitive FPS in the world. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's pretty easy to say that without much controversy. Um, I also played a good bit of Counter-Strike. Um, I'm going to keep it off my list for now because I only put maybe maybe a couple hundred hours into the game instead of like thousands of hours on some of the other games. Um, I still enjoy playing it, though. I love to get on and play with you and Justin. and It's always good to get into a competitive match and have a good time. Yeah, and... It, it's weird for me because my relationship with CSGO has always been so love-hate because while it's unquestionable how much I love playing this game, it is also, it fuels that, that rage inside me. It, it pisses me off at times because when you, when you get outplayed and you just get destroyed in a game, nothing feels worse than when you get destroyed in Counter-Strike because you know there is basically nothing you could have done than be better, which is yeah. a frustrating ball to hit. It's a pure it's, skill game. Yeah, it's one of those games that will literally suck you in. Like I like yeah. I was saying at the beginning of this video, it sucked me in for about like three years, and I put like three thousand hours into it, and I was still, objectively speaking, pretty bad at it. Like I got pretty high up in the ranks, but you know, I'm no pro, no way, not a chance in hell. <laughs> the skill ceiling is so high in, in this game so that high. you can literally sink so many hours and still not be, you know, you're still improving almost daily because. When, when the skill ceiling is that high and you can literally game for hours on end and get better every game, I mean, that's just like an addictive type of game, you know? It really is. And I think one of the absolute golden things about CSGO, and this kind of extends to all Valve games, is that that skill curve and the competitive side of the game can be very daunting to new players. 
but there is this large subsection of the community dedicated to like custom games or custom servers through the server browser because Valve just lets you do whatever the hell you want. There's so many fun custom game modes in Counter-Strike, like surfing and bunny hopping, the fun deathmatch versions. Yeah, there's even this... just DMing is always yeah. good time. Yeah, there's, there's this whole entire section to this game that has nothing to do with the competitive 5v5. And I've sunk just as much time into that. Like, especially this last year, I've been surfing a ton in CSGO. It's one of my favorite things to do. You just throw on some music or like a podcast or something, and you just chill back. It's so weirdly... Uh, calming for me to do that. It's like a de-stressor. And that's that's why I think Counter-Strike is such a great package, especially for $15. Because you get this this limitlessly replayable PvP Trip, whenever you want. Title. Triple A PvP. Yeah, you get updates all for free. And you can participate in operations like every six months or so yeah, that you can that pay operation for. operation was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, and you don't have to. You don't have to buy the operation. You don't have to buy skins. You don't have to do anything like that. You can just pay $15 and get thousands of potential hours of playtime. And no other game, except for maybe one or two I've seen in my time as a gamer, can offer that. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and segue into my uh, favorite game of the year so far. Okay, go ahead. Because these two are, you know, the two megas in gaming, especially competitive gaming. And we're going to talk about League of Legends here a little bit. Okay. I sunk a lot of hours in League of Legends this year. Um, I picked up the game last year for a little bit, but never got really hardcore into it because the entry point into the League of Legends is actually pretty high. It's it's very daunting to get into the league because there's so much shit going on. <laughs> but since these games are very similar, and I kind of want to talk to you about what you just said there about how you could sink in fifteen dollars and have thousands of hours, thousands of hours of gameplay time, whereas League of Legends it's zero dollars and you can play forever. Literally, is it? free champion rotation you can play every champion if you just kind of wait it out so i thought league of legends was a, a it was a great year for league of legends i think we had five new champions the competitive scene was going crazy i had a lot of fun with league and i'm really excited to see what the lcs franchising is next year right and really realistically i can't comment on league without with with the fact that i only played it a very little bit and i didn't like it i don't really like mobas as a game genre there's only been a couple of mobas that have been able to hold my attention for a little bit and i don't know league just didn't vibe with me in terms of what i wanted out of a game so i can't really comment on the quality of league throughout this year but i definitely understand why people enjoy it and why it's you know it is legitimately the biggest multiplayer game out there you know bar PUBG, which is kind of like a, a, a weird animal that i want to discuss later but well, league of legends could be played time. on a potato you know what i'm saying that's that's, that's one of the best things about league of legends is that 100%. anybody can play on anything you know you got a laptop you could play on a fucking laptop with a trackpad there's one guy yeah. on youtube right now it's playing league of legends on a trackpad and dominating so yeah. the entry point into league is very low and also one more thing um sinking the amount of hours in the league that i did i thought um it's kind of an acquired taste. If you haven't played League and you see that it's a very popular game, at least give it more than like maybe like 50 hours. Give it 50 hours or so, and then if you don't like it, that's cool. Say you don't like MOBAs, <laughs> that's fine, because this is the pinnacle of MOBAs. And I think for me, it took me, I played the game off and on for like six months, maybe four games in six months, and hated it. And then after I got into it a little bit more with my other brother, Justin, and after I sunk some time in with him and he kind of taught me the game a little bit, that's when I started to really acquire the bug for League. So if you haven't played League, give it a chance, play a little bit, and then tell me you hate it. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll just, I mean, I can't not find you, not you personally. <laughs> not you personally. Anybody yeah. who hasn't played League out there, give it a shot. There, there's definitely no denying that for what you need to play League, it's pretty much accessible by everybody. You just have to yeah. have the will to download and an internet connection to play with it. <laughs> And that's why League is one of those games that will just kind of last as long as gaming does, as long as the devs continue to support it. Because well, the it, updates it, for League are actually are, are pretty insane. I mean, to, to yeah. get five new champions in a year and all of them are viable and all of them are played competitively, you know, that kind of stuff you just don't see, you know? Yeah, and plus esports as an industry has never had a better year than 2017 in terms of growth. And yeah. League can pretty much subsist off of its esports. It's getting so much money from that. There's yeah. no reason that League won't be here in 10 years and probably still be as popular. I agree. Okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, one game, oh, definitely lesser known, but it's absolutely been one of my favorites since it came out, is Dirty Bomb. 
And obviously, I've made a couple of videos on Dirty Bomb on this channel already. I did a montage like a month ago that I really enjoyed making. And Dirty Bomb is one of those games that I think takes a lot of really good ideas from other games and kind of makes it into its own unique mishmash and offers a lot of really cool things in this very tight, controlling, well-paced uh, multiplayer environment. I really like Dirty Bomb. Yeah, Dirty Bomb's heavily underrated. Um, I don't know what it is about Dirty Bomb that doesn't keep my attention on a solo level, but really keeps me um, having a great time when I'm playing with you. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I do know that playing Dirty Bomb and hitting those sniper headshots is super satisfying. I think the game is, is fairly well balanced as well. The game modes are fun. I mean, it's just a mismatch of like TF2, Overwatch, those type of games. And um, I really have a good time with Dirty Bomb. Yeah, okay, so for people who know nothing about Dirty Bomb, I highly recommend, I have a review on Dirty Bomb, it was part of my Battle of the Hero Shooter series I did a little while back. I just want to suggest checking that out if you're interested in this game. Um, it's it it's it's a game that takes elements, like, from a hero shooter, where it has, you know, individual champions that do different things, different weapons, different abilities, but then the actual minute-to-minute -minute gameplay is somewhere between, like, a very fast-paced Counter-Strike and, uh, like, a Call of Duty-style game where the movement's very fast, the TTKs are very fast, but there's not a whole lot of aiming down sights. You can, but it really slows you down. A lot of the fire is hip fire, and the game modes are all objective-based. There is no team deathmatch in this game. Everything you do revolves around doing some kind of objective in this game, which I really think is a great way to do things because it puts a lot more stress on teamwork. And there are definitely ways to play this game where your value to the team is getting kills like being a sniper or being a, a, a merc who is dedicated to taking out other players but there's also a heavy a heavy emphasis on supports and other styles of characters that are going to be more beneficial to the overall team dynamic to actually win these games and the game is just it's so well done it's so well polished and it's only gotten better since it came out i've been playing this game since it, it since it came out in early access day one i've played this game and I picked it up again recently, about a half year ago after taking a break. And the developers are still going strong. They recently went through a battle over the publishing rights, the exclusivity of the publishing rights, because they, they used to publish through Nexon. And now they're developing it independently. And since then, it's gotten like three new champions, two new maps, a bunch of new ranked updates. They're adding another new map and new champions soon. So the game is just, it's just popping off in terms of new content. And it's, it's still only gotten better, and the community is small, but very, very dedicated, and I'm definitely a member of that. And honestly, I haven't been playing much of this winter update, and I kind of need to because the game is just fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, with the variety of games that I'm playing right now, um, Dirty Bomb has kind of fell by the wayside, but I will tell you one thing that Dirty Bomb does incredibly well is the gunplay. I think the gunplay in Dirty Bomb is incredible, and I think that's the reason people play the game. It's not really an ability spam simulator type of game. Like, abilities give you a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's really about the gunplay. It's really about the bullets you're putting into somebody and how many headshots you can hit versus how many headshots the guy you're fighting can hit. And I think that's the best part about Dirty Bomb. Oh, 100%. I mean, this is a game I will recommend all the time. And it's weird because I don't play it as often as I, you know, maybe you would think I would based off of this, you know, this glamorous review I'm giving it right now. <laughs> yeah. But I find myself, like, I'll take a break from it for, like, maybe, like, a couple weeks. I'll go play something else. And then I'm sitting here in my library wondering what I'm going to play. And Dirty Bomb is just sitting there staring at me. And I'll go on, like, a two-week binge where I'm just playing this game 24-7. It happens like, it's happened like five times now, so I'm pretty sure this game just has me ca caught in that kind of way. And it's yeah. just, it's free. It is absolutely free, and they've made the game a lot more friendly to free-to-play players since I've made my review. It's a lot easier to unlock new characters. So, if you're looking for something that is going to be insanely fun, it's going to be a proper mix of fast pace, but not feeling so fast that you don't know what the hell you're doing, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, I agree 100%. You mind if I throw one out here? Go ahead. Okay, let's talk about a little gym. A little gym that I found halfway through the year this year. <laughs> a little gym that I thought was just a meme. Roblox. A uh, full disclosure. I really, I full really disclosure. love Roblox, guys. <laughs> Roblox is definitely a meme still, but you can still enjoy <laughs> the meme. 
<laughs> I thought it was only a meme. I thought that that game was a joke. I thought it was like Minecraft, but a lesser version. But I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. Um, Phantom Forces is an incredible game. It's basically the revival of BF4 that we all wanted and needed in a Roblox Minecraft type format. Um, Phantom Forces is incredible. I really enjoy the gunplay in Phantom Forces. I find that game just like mind numbingly, mind numbingly fun. Like you can just sit there and pop headshots all day with that with very little effort. It is so weird to me that this this exists. This is just it's weird because you know when we say Roblox, people are going to assume we 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 mean the whole thing. It is this specific mod, Phantom Forces, is the only reason that I would boot up Roblox right now. And Phantom Forces has the amount of content of an entire game. I have seen full release fifteen dollar, twenty dollar games with less available than Roblox. There's like. 80 something primary weapons, a bunch of secondaries, a bunch of maps, game modes, and it's kind of like this mishmash of everything from Battlefield 4 and 3, and then like weapons from Call of Duty. And yeah. it just, it, for some reason, it controls really well. The shooting is very enjoyable. The weapon balance Dude, the, is pretty good. The hit detection's great. Like, there's very little latency or lag because Roblox is like the, the easiest thing to run on any PC ever, you know? I mean, I just really enjoy Roblox. I mean, Phantom Forces especially just fits into my, like, little sweet spot of games that, like, hey, I got nothing to play today. Let's put up some Phantom Forces and just turn my brain off for a little bit and have some fun. Yeah, and I don't know. I've always had this, like, this small niche of shooters that I always like to play where it's, like, I can just kind of turn my mind off and drop 50 frags and not even think about it. And Roblox is one of those games where I'll just be listening. I listen to, like hours of podcasts, hours of music while playing Phantom Forces, and just running around destroying all the little, you know, nine-year-old kids playing Roblox, because that is the majority demographic, and I guess I'm just an outlier being a grown-ass man. But Same. there's just something weirdly fun about it. It's just like, it's it's put, the Phantom Forces developers really are legitimate game developers. What they made here is a complete game using Roblox as a basis, but yeah. saying Roblox does no justice to how well done Phantom Forces is. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. I think the majority of things that are on the Roblox like um, platform are just total memes. But Phantom Forces is a legitimate game. Super great hit detection. Super fun to play. And endlessly grindable because the weapons are very hard to unlock. So you can literally play for hours just trying to get that new sniper, or that new AR. I really like Phantom Forces a lot. Yeah. Okay. So moving on from that, this is definitely. I can't talk about a Valve game in a video about my favorite games without bringing up my other real big mainstay alongside CSGO, and that is of course Team Fortress 2. And Team Fortress 2 has kind of had a rough couple of years in terms of new content, but you know, around November-ish, TF2 got its literally biggest update in its history, this is right around the time of the 10 year anniversary of the game. TF2 has been out for a decade. And it's still constantly in the top 10 on the Steam charts. That's just how dedicated people are to this game. And if CSGO is the perfect competitive shooter, Team Fortress 2 is my perfect casual game in terms of shooters. There is something about all of the classes in TF2, the balance, the things that you can do with the classes in that game that I find to be absolutely perfect, especially when... I put a lot of time into Overwatch when it came out, and I found Overwatch in the end to be kind of this disappointment, and it got me back into wanting to play TF2 again after stopping for like a year and a half, and TF2 was just such a complete game. There was something just so, so well done with the minute to minute gameplay in that game, especially playing classes like Soldier or Sniper or Demo Man, which were my mains when I played the game all the time, and there's just... There is nothing I find better in that kind of hero shooter than what Team Fortress 2 brings to the table. And this, the end of this year has been so good to breathe life back into the game with the new updates and stuff that the developers are finally getting back into gear with releasing new stuff. And it's like League in the sense that you don't need much to run TF2, and if you can't, there are plenty of help, helpful configurations you can do on the internet because the game's been out for a decade. And it's just... It's just good. I would play TF2 every day of my life, way more than I would ever choose to play Overwatch. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much to add here because I haven't played TF2. I maybe have like one hour I booted it up. Didn't really enjoy it too much just because um, 
I think at the time that I was playing, it was very small player counts, and most people who were playing were like TF2 gods. So <laughs> I yeah. had a I had a little bit of struggle playing TF2. Um, I just wasn't my thing, but I do understand why people love it. Yeah, and if and if surfing is one of my absolute favorite things in CS:GO, it's only because I got into rocket jumping and TF2. And rocket jumping is like a legitimate, as far as I'm concerned like art form in terms of like compared to b hopping or any other of these fun movement style maps you can do in csgo or tf2 rocket jumping is like its own thing with like legitimate speed runners and like world record holders and it's one of the hardest things to master and once you do it takes a very slow very immobile class like the soldier and just transforms it into one of the highest mobility interesting to play classes that you will never truly master and i've played a lot of hours tf2 probably around like 2000 for as long as I've been playing this game. And I still haven't mastered pretty much anything in that game. But I just love it. TF2, it just has so much style. The story, the comics, all of the related media to this game is just awesome. Source Filmmaker came out with TF2, and Source Filmmaker has brought up some of the funniest videos on the internet that I've ever seen. And just, there's, there's nothing I can say that will ever, or there's nothing that TF2 can do that ever make me hate it. And for as long as I continue to play it, it will always be one of my favorite games. All right. Well, let's talk about my last game on my okay. list here. And it's the other TF2. One of the most underrated releases of 2016, Titanfall 2. I love Titanfall 2. I love it on PC. I love it on PlayStation 4. I love Titanfall 2. The multiplayer in that game is incredibly addicting i think the movement especially is a lot of fun to me personally so running around with just the classic carbine the, the gun from titanfall one with that really cool reload that i've always loved i love running around in titanfall 2 it's really easy to pick up and play it's really easy to dominate even if you haven't played in a couple of months if you're good at pvp in any game you'll be good at titanfall 2 a lot of fun oh yeah and by far one of the best FPS campaigns that has been released. Oh my period. god! Yeah, Titanfall 2 campaign was incredible. Yeah, I remember because I've, I've watched a, couple, a lot of reviews on the game, and this is a game I actually still need to play. I have it. I just haven't played it, and I, I don't know why you I have not played this that, game. Brother. This is absolutely. There's one thing I'm taking away from doing this video is I'm gonna go and play Titanfall 2 because if you made a list of all of the levels in that campaign with unique mechanics to add on to the already oh fantastic god, yes. sandbox. You would have a list of every single level. <laughs> it, it, well done. It is a simple, straightforward campaign that doesn't take itself seriously. It is just executed in its gameplay so effectively that it's just, it's fantastic. Bro, the Titan BT. Oh my god, I teared up at the end, bro. I literally yeah. teared up at the end. Spoilers. I played through that. that I, oh, dude, <laughs> the game's been out for a year and a half, dude. Suck my dick. <laughs> I love that campaign. I played through it clean with no spoilers. I didn't have, uh, I didn't watch any of the playthroughs. So when I got to the end of the game, and um, you know, spoilers, fine if you don't want to hear it. BT dies at the end of the game, but basically we take out his memory and we put him in a new Titan, and he's still alive at the end. So there you go, spoilers. Um, at the end, when we get the smart pistol, which is like one of the most iconic guns in all of Titanfall, and you get to run around with the smart pistol. Well, it's, it's PVE. Um, <laughs> you get to run around with a smart pistol in the campaign. I thought that was great, man. The ending of that campaign was incredible, and it literally made me want to start over and play the campaign again. Yeah. And, okay, I love speedrunning. If you don't like... If you've never seen any speedruns of, like, video games before, you need to get on this. And actually, when we're recording this, uh, a charity foundation called Games Done Quick is about to do their first uh, speedrun marathon of the year on the... This weekend, like, the ninth or seventh or something oh, and i don't think so this year i'll have to double check but um if you've never seen a speed run of timefall 2's campaign it's like an hour and a half long you need to watch it because the things they managed to do with just the movement in this game is yeah. unreal it is quite legitimately one of the coolest speed runs i've ever seen and it's not they don't really break the game that much they just use the movement in, in the most effective way possible and it's just cool to watch and the, the playing the campaign casually, you don't obviously have to do that, but it's just fun. And I can't wait to try it myself after seeing so many other people tell me over and over, beat it in my head to play it. But yeah, no, there's no way Typhoon 2 should ever be left out of discussion of how truly great it is. Yeah, that game's so underrated. It's such an unfortunate um, situation that it came out between Call of Duty and Battlefield 1. 
Um, but I do think it gets overshadowed, and I'm sure that it's still got a good thriving community, especially on console, and maybe not so much on PC, but definitely on console. Yep. So uh, I have two more games that I definitely want to talk about here, and then I guess we're going to have to talk a little bit about Player Unknown's Battlegrounds here at the end, because and I guess we'll just get to that. I want to save my thoughts for that for the very end. Um, so one other game that came out this year, and it really surprised me because I don't normally straight, like I pretty much exclusively play multiplayer games because that's just what I enjoy. I just enjoy playing shooters. That's what I game for. I find it, I find anything that kind of strays away from that not be as enjoyable. But there was this game that came out called Dead Cells, which is this like permadeath roguelike 8-bit game where it's like, it's got like this combat that feels like Dark Souls. And then it's also got this permadeath ability style gameplay from something like Binding of Isaac or Nuclear Throne or Rogue Legacy, which is yeah, obviously one of the bigger games that came out like three years ago. And this game has just gotten so polished and so good. And I, when I am not doing anything else and I just want to kill 30 minutes, I will boot up and play a run of Dead Cells because... Even though I am nowhere near good enough to actually like loop or do like a daily run to get on the scoreboards or even get far enough to see most of the bosses, it's just a very well put together game. The movement's really tight, the abilities are interesting, and the game just plays really well. The combat's very rewarding, the enemies telegraph their attacks really well, and when you die, it is absolutely your fault. But you get a portion of all the money you made during that run. You can upgrade your weapons or like your health potions. And you just progressively get stronger on your save file and start getting farther and farther. And each time you hit that wall, you know why. And it's just, it's just a crazy well put together game. And there's still a good community of people playing it. Even though it's just a solo player versus environment game. There's still like 3,000 people who do dailies every day. This game's awesome. I think it's only like 10 bucks or 15 bucks. It's absolutely... Roguelike is like a very... It's a very oversaturated genre at this point. But this game is an absolute representation of what this genre should do. It is so good. Yeah, I mean, I have no personal experience with the game or this genre. So I'm going to stay out of this one. Yeah, I mean, I would highly recommend this. Is all, these games are also very fun to just watch. So if you look up on YouTube, people who actually play this game, it's it's a very fun game to watch. Like I don't like Binding of Isaac personally, but I do love watching people pl play Binding of Isaac because it's just interesting to see. It Cells kind of falls into that category as well. So I want to throw that one in there as kind of like my niche, you know, game that I only play for once in a while, but I just really love. And then my last game that was on my favorite list for this year is definitely Paladins. I couldn't make this video without talking about Paladins even a little bit, even though things have kind of gotten to a weird place in my relationship to the game, especially with where they're taking it. But throughout most of this year, I have been quick to definitely jerk off Paladins at every opportunity because it is a good game. It plays really well. It's totally free. They're releasing champions all the time, and it's not that hard to get champions. And I just... I rolled off this game when Overwatch came out and I was caught up in the hype because I didn't know what the game was. And I was thankfully exposed to a video by a very popular reviewer, his name's Shammy. I think you guys should check him out because he makes great content. But he talked about it in his top 10 games of 2016, it was a very surprise pick. And he put together this very concise argument about why you should judge something as its own without just saying, oh, it's copy paste Overwatch. And you know, that kind of cut through my own haze and I gave it a try right on time, Jesse gave it a try as well. And we both loved it. It's it's an incredible game. Yeah, I agree. I like Paladins a lot. I haven't played this new update. Um, still installed on my computer. I refuse to uninstall it because I do enjoy playing it every now and then. It's not exactly my go-to game, but it is my go-to hero shooter. Without a doubt, I enjoy playing the sniper characters. And I even enjoy playing some of the other DPS-style characters as well. Yeah, and... Where, where I think Overwatch is a very slow and methodical game, a lot more based on how you work with your team, Paladins is kind of like, is it's much faster paced, it's a lot more about individual skill and uh, proficiency with your champion selection, and then they make, they find this good balance between being fully customizable like characters in TF2, or totally static like characters in Overwatch, where you can definitely augment what your care your champion does to your specific liking or play style which is what i think is one of the best draws about this because for any given champion there could be three or four different play styles you could adopt 
to try that. So that takes the effective champion count and times it by three or four because that's how many ways you can actually play that game. And unfortunately, I don't know where the game will go from here with some of the recent updates. And I made a video about this and it's talking about the cards and bound changes. And I highly recommend you check it out before you download Paladins and understand what you're getting into because as much as I will give this game praise nonstop because it deserves it, I think this recent direction change might be a breaking point where the game may not live up to the expectations it's already delivered on. Well, I have one question for you. I have not played the new update, so I have no room to comment, but I do have something that I want to say. What was wrong with the game to acquire this change? I really enjoyed the game. I thought it was in a great yeah, balance. I don't know. The card, the card system is very easy to understand, very new friendly. I don't see how you needed to do any kind of rework. Yeah, that's what I don't understand either. That's what the community is so confused about. I mean, the brief and short of it is, they took out the eleven or the twelve point loadout system that was used to balance the cards, and just replace it with this whole new system that the only way to level up your cards to make them better is to get duplicates out of chests, loot chests, and straight you only get straight pay to win. Yes, and their their compromises on it and their justifications were really weird. I mean, they locked the level of cards in competitive, like ranked, which I thought was a good move to not ruin ranked, but casual is just... Well, if you've ranked been... is dead, borderline dead in Paladins. Well, it's actually, it's had, it's had a revival since the reworks, okay. so it was actually okay. doing really strongly before this update. I don't know what it is right now, but okay. casual just got hit so hard by this because basically, if you were a new player and you were playing someone who was playing the same character as you, but had been playing for like 200 hours and had fully leveled cards, they would be objectively better than you. For Paladin no other reason. Strong has a strong player base, and I hate to say it, but maybe they built up this player base and then decided to drop a pay to win on them. I don't know. I don't know what to think, because I think the developers have had seemed very genuine with all their intentions from everything I've seen. And that's kind of the confusing state that things are in, because they've definitely doubled down, especially with all that Star Wars Battlefront controversy was going down, that this is the direction they want to go. So I don't know where Paladins will go in 2018, but I don't... The, the actual gameplay is so enjoyable. The way it controls, it's so tight, it's so polished for being a game that is objectively speaking in beta that I'm just worried that they're going to ruin it because they thought they could make more money off of it. Even though the game had, you know, major sponsors in esports, they just signed up with uh, WESA, which is one of the biggest esports organizations in the world. And they were moving forward. They have like an expo coming up where they're gonna have like the world championships for Paladins. And it's like, I can't see the game being be struggling for money, especially because this is a studio that develops Smite. And Smite makes a ton of money too. So I don't know what the justification is and it really confuses me. Yeah, I don't really understand. Like I said, I've played the new update, so I'm going to reserve comment, but um, I still enjoy Paladins. I think it's fun to play. It's a free-to-play shooter, and if we can get away from the pay-to-win model that they have right now, that would be great. Yeah, so I mean, speaking for the fact that I played it so much in 2017, I had to mention it, because I, for every bit I've played it, I've loved it. And so, kind of wrapping things up here, I want to address a game that is, you know, you either really love it or you really hate it at this point, and that's Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And despite what I just said, I kind of find myself in the middle with this game. It is unquestionably the most popular game on Steam right now. There's no denying that the game has had like up to 3 million concurrent players, which is absolutely insane. But I don't know because the game is still so unfinished, still has so many issues, so many basic issues. that it's hard for me to ever recommend it for the fact that it's $30 and just has one game mode and two maps. Um, I don't really have a problem with it having one game mode, two maps. Um, the, the problem I have with the game, and I'm on the hated side of things, not because of the gameplay, but just simply because it's just too hard to run on my PC personally. I have a SSD, a 1050 Ti, and an Intel i5, and I still can't run the game properly at 60 frames per second. So for me, that's just a straight deal breaker. Like I, yeah. I can't deal with that. I can't deal with spawning into a game and having my buildings not load in so to have three million current players i don't know how many beastly pcs are out there but i know a lot of people are playing with subpar graphics and subpar um you know just straight up straight up um unfair game because you're playing at a straight disadvantage yeah and like i i just put i just upgraded to a 1070 thanks bro really appreciate you merry christmas, yeah, merry christmas um dog. And I have an i5 processor as well, and admittedly with this 1070 I run the game a lot better, but 
it's still bad. It still lags. It still has frame drops. The actual hit detection is still terrible. There's still server lag. And the fact that they pushed this game to official release in, in the state, I think, was... Is it almost felt like a slap in the face to the community because this game is nowhere near official release status. I don't care how popular it is, I don't care how many streamers suck player unknown's dick and play it every day. This game is not finished. And yeah. even though so many people are saying that this is like the best game of the year, oh you know, PUBG game of the year, I don't know how you could say that with it being not only not even a full game yet, but being so inconsistent and straight up just saying that a majority of people in the gaming world cannot play this because it runs so poorly yeah so I don't, well i, I don't mean know. i'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there that fortnite's gonna dethrone pubg in the next six months because the game is i think that the gameplay is comparable and the, the just the straight up quality of the game is better because it's just so much easier to run so many more players can play it not to mention it got to console first i think fortnite's gonna take over pubg in the near future Right, and honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I totally forgot to bring up Fortnite. I loved Fortnite. I thought Fortnite was very refreshing in terms of what it brought to Battle Royale. It's a lot less serious, a lot more just kind of casually fun, and it's got a lot more wacky, cool elements to it that I actually think makes the game more enjoyable than kind of like this drab, super serious feel that you get from PUBG all the time. I can lose in the final circle in Fortnite and not care. I can lose in the final circle in PUBG and break a monitor, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think Fortnite is actually really good. Um, Battle Royale is just not a, a game, like a game genre that I have a great time in. I'm yeah. more of like a running gun kind of guy, you know. I just like games that are more like DME. Um, so, so Battle Royale is not really for me. So maybe I'm not the, the best person to take advice from on this category. But I do think Fortnite's going to overtake PUBG without a doubt. And plus, Fortnite's experimenting with, like, other stuff. Like, they had that 50v50 weekend, which I'm really mad I missed out on, because that's, like, that would be really yeah, fun. Yeah, that sounds awesome, yeah. Yeah, they're doing all these fun extra game modes, their support, like, all the updates, like, game balance and all that is free. And then they have this other section of the game, which apparently might go free to play at some point, which is this full PvE co-op survival side, which is what Fortnite was built on. And I'm actually excited to try that in 2018 as well. It's just, Epic Games does nothing but really good quality stuff with the uh, unreal tournament and paragon and all that they just they just make good games and fortnite yeah. as far as it goes if you want a game that's just going to run well has good hit detection is supported just as regularly and is overall going to be a more enjoyable experience and right out the gate or npcs and it's free so you don't have to drop 30 dollars on a half finished game which i understand that people don't like doing that um, yeah, Fortnite's there, and just I don't think PUBG is anywhere near game of the year, and it's definitely not my favorite game. I, it, I enjoy playing it sometimes. When it runs well, I can understand why people like it, but it only runs well like one out of ten games. So I can't recommend people play that, you know, and spend thirty dollars on that. Yeah, I agree. I'm actually a, a little ashamed that the big streamers who have the beastly PCs, Shroud. I'm looking at you that are not kind of bringing up the fact that like look man PUBG's not a good time if you don't have a high-end pc that's just straight fact like more people should be talking about it because the more people who the more influencers in the community who play PUBG is the more people will spend three dollars on a game that they can't run yeah and it just makes no sense to me because fortnite and PUBG both use the same engine they licensed the unreal engine from epic games so how can you have Fortnite, a game that is run on the same engine, admittedly with a completely different art style, a completely different design philosophy, but uses the same core engine parts, run so well compared to PUBG, which runs like dog shit at best, and even worse when it doesn't. It, it makes no sense. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, it's obvious that Fortnite was better developed. Yeah, I think PUBG has overall more potential because it already has first person game modes and first person doesn't really fit with what fortnite does at least for me i prefer playing in first person when possible so i think the overall potential with pubg is there and obviously they've made enough money to capitalize on that and i think it'll take the entirety of 2018 for it to get there and if it does get there i will be the first to relent and say that it's a good game because the potential is there i think that's what frustrates me is that it's always there there's like fleeting moments of what makes the game good, but they're just that. They're fleeting. Yeah, I agree 100%. I have nothing else to say about PUBG. Yeah, I, I, that's all I got on it as well. 
Alright guys, well, this has been a little bit of kind of like a, a roundtable discussion about our favorite games this year. 2017 was an interesting year in both gaming and like YouTube in general. It's been very fun. Me and Jesse have been just enjoying the hell out of being able to create and stream and interact with you guys on the channel. Obviously, Andrew has just been the biggest bro in terms of allowing us to do this. And I think 2018 for not only Nerds Marais, but gaming... And for all of us, I think it's going to be a great year, and I'm really excited to take that leap with you guys and go forward. I think it's just going to be a great time. Yeah, I agree. And also, one last thing, don't forget to check out our casting call video. Um, that's a very important thing that we just posted out on the channel. If you're interested in being a creator here, please go check out that video. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you need to go watch that. If you're, if you're a small creator like we used to be, or well, we still are, still you are. can you still are, yes, let's not get full of ourselves. Uh, you could join up and you can if you have something you're really passionate about and you're willing to you put the time in to make it into something that you enjoy We are definitely willing to listen to what you got to say So make sure you check that out hit us up on Twitter if you got something to offer Other than that guys this has been our favorite games of 2017 If you liked the video make sure you hit that like button make sure you subscribe for more and follow us on Twitter to find out what's going on My name is Jack. This has been Jesse and thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time Later.